Hey there, Blender Wizards! Welcome back to the channel! We're going to be simulating water along a curve, guiding its every ripple, twist and turn beautifully to create a realistic simulation. Thanks for joining me on this tutorial, and let's get started! So here I have a default Blender 3.6 scene opened, and I'm gonna delete all the objects here. Now let's add in a plane. First I want to create a spiral curve, so for that, I'm gonna use geometry nodes. So let's open up a tab here, go to geometry nodes, and we're going to create a new system on this. Now just remove the input and get a spiral. Connect the spiral to the group output. Edit this however you want. So I'm gonna increase the height. Let's give it some resolution as well. And now let's get in a curve to mesh node. Right here in the viewport, let's hit Ctrl A and Visual Geometry to Mesh. I'm gonna go to Object, Convert to a Curve. So now we can go to Edit Mode and twist this curve however we like. Now before doing that, we need to mesh it again, so let's get a new Geometry Node system on this. Get a Curve to Mesh node. In the Profile Curve, I'm going to get a Curve Line. Connect the curve to the profile curve. Make all these values 0. In the start y axis, I'm gonna make it 0.5. And in the end y axis, let's make it negative 0.5. So it's on the middle of the curve. Now to control the radius, we're gonna get a set curve radius node. And bring this radius up just like that. Now one more thing we want to do is, let's just get a delete geometry node. And why am I doing this? Because I want four curves like that. It's like an array of curves. And then I'm gonna randomize them a little bit so the fluid is not going along one curve. It's going along four curves and it's creating an interesting profile. And that's how we're gonna make our simulation more realistic. because. Usually people use just one curve and then their fluid looks very round and just like a thick kind of object that's going along a curve and it doesn't look like water. So yeah, let's get the delete geometry here. We're gonna mute it for a while with M. Let's hit Shift Z and look at the wireframe. So I want four lines here, so I'm gonna get a resample curve node and the count is gonna be four. So we got one, two, three, and four. Now I want to delete these lines and keep these. And this is gonna be done with delete geometry. So let's unmute that. I'm going to get an index. We get a compare greater than node. This is gonna be set to integer and connect this to the selection. Now let's bring up this B value. So you can see it will give us this kind of result. But we don't want that, so I'm gonna set this from point to edge. And now if you increase this, it will only give you the curves that you want. So I'm gonna keep increasing it until we get to the end of it. So right here you can see if I bring this down a little bit, this is the value I want. So we have four curves right here, and it looks good. Let's just bring down the radius a little bit. Then I'm going to go to the edit mode, turn on the proportional editing, and twist different areas of this curve so it looks more interesting while simulating. The proportional size is going to be 3, and I hit Ctrl T to twist that. I'm going to make this connected only so it only affects the area right here. Let's twist that as well. I'm going to twist this area just like that. Now, let's hit Ctrl A and Visual Geometry to mesh. I'm gonna go to the modifiers and get a displacement modifier on this. Create a new texture and go to the texture settings, make it clouds, and I'm gonna bring down the depth to zero and bring up the scale. So this is gonna be fine. Now I'm gonna come here to the modifiers tab and bring down the strength to something like 0.2. So now let's get a subdivision surface modifier on this as well. 
and this is going to be set to 1. Now I hit Ctrl A and Visual Geometry to Mesh. So it will apply our modifier. Now let's go to Object, Convert and Curve. I'm going to hit Tab, select these four vertices here and Shift S cursor to select it. Right click Set Origin to 3D Cursor. So our origin is on this point now. Let's go to the Physics tab. I'm gonna close this tab right here so it join areas. And let's give it a force field. This is gonna be a force and the shape is going to be curve. And in the strength, I'm gonna make it negative 8. The flow is gonna be 1.3. So these are the best settings that I've tried and experimented with. So you don't have to. And just copy these. The noise amount is gonna be 3. And I think that's basically it. Now next thing is we want a domain. So let's get a cube here. And I'm going to go to the object properties. In the viewport display, let's make it wire. And I'm going to give it a shortcut so I don't have to come here all the time. So right click on this and assign shortcut. And right here, just give it any shortcut that you want. I'm going to give it a J. And now if I hit J on the viewport, this menu will come up so you can choose whatever you want. Now, let's bring that to the middle. I'm going to scale it up all the way just like that and bring it up. Hit Tab, Scale, Shift, Z. Just make sure this is on the middle and the curve is not going out of this. Apply the scale on it as well. Scale. And now, right here, let's get a uv sphere i'm gonna hit tab and scale it down just like that so you got all these objects now i'm gonna give it some physics properties but before doing that let's scale up our objects by two because in blender if your scale is not enough or not right at least your simulations will not work fine so select everything and hit s2 to scale it up by two you can bring it up as well as you like now let's select the cube, go to the physics properties and in the fluid, let's click that. I'm going to give it a domain. This is going to be a liquid domain. The resolution is going to be 100. It works fine. CFL number, let's make it 2. I'm going to turn off all the border collisions because we don't want them. And right here in the mesh, let's turn it on. And the particle radius is going to be 1.7 or something. You can bring it down based on how thin you want the fluid to be. But when you bring it down too much, it will look very bad. The start frame is 1 and the end frame is going to be 200. And the type, let's make this type to modular so we can bake every single part of this simulation separately. Turn on is resumable so that we can resume the bake as we want. That's the domain settings. Let's hit J again and make it wire. Now select the sphere, give it a fluid, make it a flow. This is going to be a liquid as well. These were the physics properties. Now let's just save our file. And I think we should bake the simulation now. So select the cube and bake data. Now that the bake is done, I'm going to set the end frame to 200 because we baked only 200 of them. And let's play it. Okay. This looks pretty good. I like it. Now based on the length of your curve and all that, it will, it will decide the length of the animation. But you can see how this looks like. And one more thing here. When you play around with this flow value on the curve force field, it will change the result. If you bring it down, it will be faster. If you bring it up, it will be kind of slower and fluidy, kind of elastic. So that's what it does. Let's mesh this so you see how this looks like. Scroll down right here and bake mesh. Alright, so the mesh is baked now, so select the fluid cube, let's hit J and make it solid so that we can see it properly. 
I'm gonna right click shade smooth and in the modifiers let's get a smooth modifier as well. I'm gonna make the repeat value to 15 and now let's play the simulation. Awesome. This looks pretty good. But of course, depending on my curve, the more interesting my curve is, the better it's gonna look. So play around with your curve and all of that. And that's the result. You can see these things. You won't get that in a single curve. So you can use an array of these curves, give it some displacement, make them kind of distorted and stuff like that. So then they will look very nice. And for example, if I move my curve, from right here and extend it that way and bring it back to the line like that the fluid will go in this thing on that curve like that and come back and it will form a hole in here so you can get very interesting results in this thing it's just based on your curve now okay let's make a little bit of a scene as well here i'm gonna hide the render and we put visibility for my sphere I'm gonna get a plane, scale it up by 20, scale it up again, and apply the scale. Let's get the shading tab in here. Give it a new material. This is gonna be a glass texture. I want some water background here. Let's get a bump node. Connect that to the normal. I'm gonna get a noise texture as well. Some easy settings for the water and connect that factor to the height. I'm gonna hit Control T, remove the mapping, connect the object to the vector. Now one mistake all of you are doing here is giving too much bump on a watery surface because water is always trying to keep its surface as smooth as possible. So these are small scenes so you may want to make it very very subtle. Let's bring down the detail to zero and bring down the scale as well bring it up a little bit more and i'm going to bring down the strength to half so make it 0.5 and the distance is going to be 0.1 or something so this is looking pretty good let's bring down the scale again so you get something that we like i'm going to get a camera here let's get a camera control alt numpad zero you can make it a square resolution. I'm gonna make it 1080 by 1080. Render region, it's gonna be RGB. So now let's go to the rendered view. I'm gonna show you how to do the easiest lighting, which looks pretty good as well. And EV, make it cycles. GPU compute if you have. And I'm gonna make it 500 samples. And in the color management, let's make it high contrast. I like that. World tab. And in the color, let's get a sky texture. We're gonna go to the world tab right here as well in the shading. And now right here, let's turn off the scene world and scene lighting. And bring down the air to zero. Bring down the sun elevation. So this is the cinematic lighting I'm talking about. Now let's select the water objects. Go to object right here. Give it a new material. Make it glass. The IR is going to be 1.33. Get a little bit of roughness. And that's it. And I think this is it. Look at how good this is looking. That's our water and you can select the camera, give it some depth of field to hide this sharp edge right here. I'm gonna select my camera real quick. Turn on depth of field and select the object with it. Bring down the f-stop so you get some blurriness on that. And this is it. We've got it. So this is the simulation and it looks amazing, I'm telling you that. Look at that. The start of it is very satisfying as well. You can see how this transforms into that wave kind of shape. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like this and share it with your friends.
I'll see you in my next tutorial.